one and a half percent per year. And um, progress. That brings me back to the point of this uh, uh, question, how important is breeding, this breeding progress? And maybe we can compare that with other agriculture industries. And here I found something interesting that harvest machines, these combine machines, which were a big milestone in the agriculture, they reduced the necessary time for harvesting one hectare by 75% in the last 50 years. I say here today, breeding in rapeseed can compete exactly with this progress and I would like to show you that now. One of these new topics coming up uh, is now this uh, plant health, stem health. It is now one of my new heart uh, stories and I would like to give you a little bit deeper explanation about that. 2023 delivered quite well a big variation uh, between uh, healthy varieties, susceptible varieties, and finally, the consequences outside in the field. We could see, based on these late rainfalls, a higher disease pressure of verticillium, that uh, some really high-performing candidates from the year before dropped down strong in the yield potential and suffered a lot from uh, lodging. Question is now, is that just an observation yeah, regional observation to the north of Germany, or can we find that also in other countries? Yes, we can find that in other countries. Here on this graph, you see again this uh, disease scores from Poland for the top five hybrids of Rapul and also for the top five hybrids of the European leading rapeseed breeder. We can see that uh, these uh, Rapul hybrids already show a slightly lower susceptibility against the different diseases in comparison to the competitors. But, yeah, I mentioned already, we go one step further and realize with this new generation a clear step further in this uh, story of stem health and show here that we have more healthy solutions outside for, for you, for the farmers, for the practice. Maybe some of you will ask now, okay, come on, is that really a big difference between 12, 15, 18 percent susceptibility for verticillium? I say yes, ladies and gentlemen, and please keep in mind it makes a difference if you have 15% rapeseed in your crop rotation or 30, like we can see here very often in the Baltic market. And next point, of course, is then the question, okay, what is the further benefit then? Lodging maybe is not coming every year, but what is the further benefit? We can see that very clear, it is yield. Here it is an uh, example of what we already have seen 2022 in a uh, lo trial location in Czech Republic from our international screening network. We had here quite difficult uh, conditions, high nitrogen uh, supply, we had uh, disease pressure, rainfalls, wind, so the varieties really struggled then uh, uh, in the springtime. And we could see here very well and very good that uh, this new generation, these new candidates, Janos and Texas, perform here on a totally other level in comparison to the rest of the portfolio. Maybe some of you here recognize these variety names already. Because these variety names were exactly the same ones who dominate last year also here the official trials in Kaunas. Texas as the first place, Janos at the third place. So it's not only that they convince far away in Czech Republic, no, they also show here very well this new potential under these challenging conditions last year here in Kaunas. But there is further consequences from this uh, stem health. One point is uh, that I'm personally convinced 
with these stem hills later ripening that we will harvest in future rapeseed after winter wheat. That is not something in an exception anymore. We see that in my original home area in central east Germany, more and more that farmers look at first for the quality of winter wheat and go then to healthy varieties in, in rapeseed. And there's another consequence, and that will be probably a very yeah, exciting discussion, maybe also with some of my competitors sitting here in the audience. Another consequence from this stem health is on pot shattering resistance, probably one of the most important marketing stories here. And for this uh, con uh, connection, I would like to share another story from last summer uh, with you. It was uh, one of our new uh, candidates called Murray, a variety which we sell in the UK and uh, uh, which performs very well in Denmark. We were thinking, okay, very strong results, very promising results, three years in a row in the Danish trials. Personally, I was really convinced that we can start now with our sales partner in Denmark a first pre-launch. So I had a phone call with this uh, sales manager and I explained to him more about my variety. LMS, former stem resistance, same like Dominator. We had a uh, resistance against light leaf spot, something which is more and more coming, a new disease coming from UK more and more to the east. We have a very broad uh, variety package, late sowing potential, lodging resistance. We have uh, stronger flexibility in nitrogen management and growth regulation. And again, three years in a row, this very strong performance results in uh, these official trials. And just between us, I know, okay, three years better than the strongest hybrid in his portfolio. I think my, my colleagues from the competitors, they will agree, that was a, that was a low brainer, that will work. So I explained that to him, and then he said to me, does the hybrid have pot shatter resistance? I said, no. And he said, okay, but uh, the other competitors told so strong in the market that it is very important. And I said, yeah, okay, but how often is the hailstorm coming before harvest? So we had a discussion and finally, ladies and gentlemen, he declined. And I was really pissed off, to be honest, because I was so convinced that this hybrid with this performance, this package, is really a reliable add-on for his portfolio. So, what a loss. What a stupid decision, ladies and gentlemen. But a couple of weeks ago, I got a very nice article from UK. The official variety authorization, the uh, in UK, AHDB, responsible for all the trials and development for the recommended list. They give an analyze of seed losses in the trial results 2023. And let me share that with you. You see here on the left side, based on 11 locations, this analyze of um, seed losses before harvest. And uh, we can see here very well, green color varieties without pot shattering, blue colors, the varieties with pot shattering. And then you can see one green color among these blue ones. That is my hybrid, Murray, which I explained to that for, uh, sales manager and he declined. It is among these best hybrids for low seed losses. And it's very easy explanation, ladies and gentlemen. Verticillium, based on these strong rainfalls last year in the UK, was a really difference maker. 
some very high performing varieties struggle a lot with this verticillium story. They show a lot of uh, seed losses before harvest, and varieties without this pot shattering resistance showed the same. You can see here on the picture on the right, we have on the left side two varieties with pot shattering resistance, and we have on the right side two varieties without pot shattering resistance. And you can see here how small were the differences regarding this story. If we go one further, there's uh, also something, uh, yeah, sclerotinia, also a relevant disease here in the Baltic markets, come up once in a while and can really make a big uh, headache for, for us. In comparison to some of our competitors bringing resistant material from Canada into uh, our European rapeseed diseases and then wondering why this uh, is not working uh, regarding overwintering, we do it other way. We make selection outside in the fields uh, on our um, uh, breeding station in Poland and we make standard tests in the greenhouse according a standard protocol. We see here that uh, plants, varieties are growing in the greenhouse, will be then infected by artificial uh, infection and spores uh, uh, in the flowering time. And then after one week, we make uh, uh, already this uh, scoring. And again here, Dominator with this stem resistance, with this robust green stem, show already in 2019 an interesting step forward in comparison to our um, Czech varieties here in these internal trials. Maybe also one of these reasons why Dominator in the Baltics or in Poland is the leading hybrid in the market. If we uh, go now further and have a look to this new material, we see here that we are still on the same level like this marketing sclerotinia resistant hybrids. And uh, we, we can compete here very well with this, uh, um, uh, yeah, with this uh, um, varieties, um, with these competitor varieties, even without this aggressive marketing. We, we say that we are on a good way, but this journey takes time and we have to uh, uh, improve here this uh, um, uh, material uh, with more and more uh, resistance from foreign kinds of, of rapeseed. But that will take time, ladies and gentlemen.